In this video we're going to look at an application called Delicious. It's a web-based application and it's in the category of social bookmarking. So you could use this for yourself simply to save your bookmarks on the web where you could access them from any machine or you could also choose to share those bookmarks with someone else. So the first thing you'd want to do is sign up for an account. It's free. And then you'd go to sign in and I'll see you on the other side. One of the first things you might notice about uh, Delicious is that it's a very simple design. It's not graphically super appealing. You've got your menu over on the left and your app bookmarks are over on the right. So we'll go through the site and see how it works. The bottom link is settings which is just what you'd expect. There's a section for profile um, for your account where you have your email, password changes, here you can decide whether you want to connect to uh, a couple of types of social media. And then here's an area to import or export these bookmarks. Okay, let's get down to the basics. If you wanted to look at your links that you've got in there, that would be under my links. And so you can see I have a variety of links in here. When you want to add a new link, there's several ways. You have the add link button here. And I could simply, let me just go out there and go to something simple. So if I wanted to add this link to Google, I could simply copy the address. And paste it in. Now, of course, this is the hardest way to do it. So we just click add link. You can see the link is up here. It gives some suggested tags down here, or you can type your own. So I'll put in Google search. And if there was something else I wanted to put in there, um, research. And if I wanted to put in multiple tags, I just separate them with commas. So um, research whatever. Okay, there's also a place for you to leave your private comments down here. That is not required. It's more or less if it's going to help you with the organizational process. Notice there is a link here that says public cur currently. If you click this, it would turn it to private, which means that other people searching delicious would not find this. They certainly could find Google, but they would not find it from your bookmarks. But I'm going to leave it public because in most cases there's no reason not to. So I'm going to say save the link. And that's one way to um, one way to do it. A second way to do it, and let's come over here and try a different search engine. So if I go back and I go to add link, notice that down here there was a little um, button that says bookmarklet. Now if I click this, which I've done previously, it actually adds this button to the toolbar. And the nice thing about that is when I'm in Bing here, the button was already here. So I don't need to copy or paste this address. I simply need to click on it there and it will pop open the window. So I, I don't ever really need to go to Delicious to necessarily add to my bookmarks. And I'm going to call it search engine search um, Microsoft. And I don't really need a comment here. I'm going to say save link. See, it's also going to give me some information. I'm the 564th person to save this link in the Delicious community. Okay, if I were to come back to Delicious, I would find that link in here as well when I refresh the page. Okay, so there it is right there. Now, notice that there are also, there's an app button here. So if I had clicked on this, it's going to offer, there's an app that you can install on your iPhone, on your Android device, on Firefox, or on the Chrome operating system. And basically what this is is a button that does very much the same things that this bookmarklet does here. 
Um, the main difference is that it would appear over here as a button up on your up on your um, toolbar, and you could use it. But it works very much the same way. Okay, let's go back to my links and take a look at how we might alter a link that's already in place. So here's that Bing link I had, and if I go to the right, you can see there's a share button, and these are various, um, you know, different sites that I could share it with with one click. There's an edit button that's going to bring back my original window so that I can make changes um, if I felt they were necessary. There's also a delete if I want to get rid of it. Now on this side you're going to notice that the tags that I put in here are displayed below. So if I click one of those it's going to ask if I want to filter by that or if I want to search delicious. So if I click search delicious I'm now out there looking for all the links that were tagged by other people that had search engine as one of their as one of their tags. If on the other hand I picked filter okay it's going to show me what I've tagged with search engine. So it looks like I, I did Bing with search engine but I must not have done Google because it didn't show up. So let's try an alternate search here. Um, and if I look here, I don't see the, uh, I see Google, I see search, I see, okay, so let's, let's fix that. I'm going to say edit and search engine sh certainly should have been included in that. So now when I go back to my Bing tag and run it, I see both of them. Okay, so that's the basics of bookmarking. Um, there are a couple of other links here we're not going to really go into. Trending is something they have in beta that shows you what's being bookmarked um, at this time, um, etc. And there is a network, so you could actually hook up to other people who are using this service and kind of follow their bookmarks. Not, not something that I tend to do. Okay, now the big thing here is, is the search. So let me delete what's in there and just click in the search box and say we're going to search for AUP for acceptable use policy. Now when I first put something in there it asks me if I want to search in my own links or in all of Delicious. So that's similar to what we did before. I'm going to search in my links. Let me make this a little bigger. There you go. Okay. So all of these things are tagged as having um, AUP for acceptable use policy in them, which is great. Um, also, notice that it filled in for me the at sign and RCR. That's because that's my account. So that's how it knows that it's searching within my account, at RCR. And if you look up at the URL, you're going to notice that the address is delicious.com slash RCR. That's my space. Slash search and then AUP. So the actual instructions for the search are right up here in the URL. And what's very handy about that is if I were to copy this link and just pl plug it into an email and send it to people, or if I were to create it as a link on a web page, those people would be able to click on that and get my set of bookmarks. Now the one caveat to that is that all those links were made public. If you had decided to make some of those links private, when they clicked on it, those links would be left out from the group. But it's a great quick way to assemble um, a group of resources and then distribute it very, very quickly and easily. Now if you look up at the top here, when we're in this search mode, you're going to have a couple of different options across the top. One is called Tags. If I click on it, these are all the tags I've used within my bookmarks. And like a word cloud, you can see that the ones that were used more frequently are larger. So in this particular set, most of the bookmarks, or a lot of the bookmarks, are about blogs, um, acceptable use policy, apps, free, and iPad have also been used regularly because they're larger than the others. But if I click on any of those, such as iPad, that will bring up all of the links that have been tagged with iPad. 
Now immediately to the right of tags is something called tag bundles. If I click on that you can see that there's one called acceptable use, one called kindergarten iPad apps, one called presentations, and one called text sites. If I click on acceptable use it's going to show me that the tags in this particular bundle are AUP and blog and then it's going to call up all the sites that have one or more of those tags in it. Now if I wanted to create a tag bundle I would click on tag bundles and then I would click the icon to the right and I could create a new one. So I could call it, um, I'll just call this one test and then the tags I'm going to try iPad and free and maybe apps. So I'm separating those with commas and I'm saving the bundle. Now I've got this test bundle and when I click on it it finds apps, iPad and here's free. So it's doing a search for those things and bringing up things that may be related to that. Now if you want to edit a tag bundle you simply, uh, let's come back to the test one, when you mouse over it there's a pencil to the right it will bring up that same window for you to be able to to work in. And if you no longer want a tag bundle you simply click that same pencil but over in the opposite corner is a delete button. So it'll ask you to verify and then you do that. So those are the two main main functions here. It does have a search by date if you're interested so you could change these dates and filter things that were entered during certain periods of time. So this is, these were things that were done during 2015 in January, so that's how it works. And these are things in 2014 in November. Okay, there's also a button for those who are interested, extra filters. You can get things that were untagged, or you can get all your public links or your private links up at once. And I'd like to look at one other way to conduct searches, and that's directly through the search box. And that gives you a little more control. So let me delete those for a second. If I were to search for at RCR, it's going to show me all of my links. But if I were to do at RCR, and I were to do iPad, comma, apps, it's going to show me Oh, and let me add free to that, comma, free. Okay, there we go. And you'll notice that it gets me anything with apps or iPad or free like our previous search did. If, however, I change this uh, the syntax here a little bit and put the hash mark in front of each search term, Now it is going to find the ones that have all three in it. So by spacing them out and putting hashtags, I'm saying that only pick the set that has all three instead of any of the three. Uh, now in a nutshell, that's delicious. It's a quick and easy tool to learn how to use. It's very handy for sharing your work. And unlike other bookmarking tools, or a lot of other bookmarking tools, there's an added layer of flexibility here. Normally when we bookmark, like such an, as in a toolbar or something like that, we have to choose a location for that bookmark. So when we come across something that could fit into several categories, that's difficult to do unless we want to add it several times, which is not advisable. A system like this where you can add your own tags, as many as you like, as few as you'd like, allows that bookmark to exist essentially in several locations. So if I'm searching for apps, something may come up. If I'm searching for free, uh, the same thing may come up depending on, on how it was tagged.